Hello everyone. Welcome to this video in the machine learning teach by doing series. Today we are going to learn about an important aspect in convolutional neural networks and that is the max pooling layer. In the previous lecture we have looked at uh, another layer which is called as the filtering layer which is one of the most important layers in the CNN or convolutional neural network. However, there is another layer which you will see when convolutional neural networks are implemented. Let us try to understand everything about the max pooling layer, what it is and why is it used in the first place. So first let me start with the what is it aspect and then I'll tell you why max pooling layers are used in convolutional neural networks. So the first thing to understand is that the and the filtering layer has some values, right? Which are the weights which need to be optimized. The max pooling layer does not have any weights. There are just two parameters which are needed when we describe this layer. First is something called as the stride and second is something called as the size. So let's say if this is the input image which I have, which is a nine by nine image and I have represented some pixel values which are randomly taken in each of the pixels. So there are 81 total pixels here. Let's say we want to pass this image through a max pooling layer. First question which you should ask yourself is what is the size? If I say the size is 3 by 3, which means that I'll have this uh, max pooling layer of 3 by 3 size, which I've shown here, 3 rows and 3 columns. The second thing which you should ask is the stride. The stride means how many steps we should leave before we move to the next max pooling layer. So for example, if the stride is equal to, uh, if the stride is equal to zero, it means that the max pooling layer will slide without leaving any gap. So this is, this will be my first max pooling layer. Then uh, let me show you well where the second will be. This will be my second max pooling layer. Then this will be my third max pooling layer, etc. I'll slide similarly uh, for the entire image. This is very similar to the convolutional operations stride which we use. So stride equal to three means that we will leave a gap of three. So if this is the first max pooling layer, the second will be here and the third will be over here. The fourth will be over here. The fifth will be over here. Sixth will be over here. The seventh will be over here. 8th will be over here and 9th will be over here. So basically uh, what this is doing is that it's leaving a gap. So usually in max pooling layers, the stride is the same as the size. So the size is 3 by 3, right? Uh, so the stride will be typically be 3, which means that this will be the first max pooling layer. Then right next to it will be the second, etc. If the stride was zero, then as I mentioned, the second max pooling layer will be over here. The third max pooling layer will be over here, etc. So it will just not leave any gap before moving ahead. Okay, so once the stride and the size are specified, let me tell you what a max pooling layer does. And it's very simple. Basically, we have these nine blocks, right? This is the first max pooling block. This is the second max pooling block. This is the third max pooling block, etc. So we have these nine blocks. What the max pooling layer does is that it looks at each block and takes the maximum value out of that block. So for example, you first look at the first block, the maximum value is five, and then here comes five. Then you look at the second block, the maximum value is four. So here comes four. Then you look at the third block, the maximum value is one. So here comes one. Similarly, you look for all the blocks and you write down their maximum values. So after you apply the max pooling layer to this input image, the output image will be a much scaled down image. So this will be a three by three image, which is scaled down now, right? Uh, and then the output in this or every pixel in this output image will contain the maximum value in that corresponding block. That's it. The max pooling layer is as simple as that. But you should understand that the stride and the size are very important. If, for example, I use a max pooling layer of uh, size equal to 2 and stride equal to 2, it will be like this. This will be my first block. 
then this will be my second block then this will be my third block this will be my fourth block etc so then the output dimensions will differ that way if the input size is nl by nl by ml minus 1 then the max pooling output layer size will be nl by stride multiplied by nl by stride multiplied by ml minus 1 it's very important to keep in mind that the max pooling layer actually preserves the number of channels so the number of channels was ml minus 1 in the input layer and in the output or in the input image in the output the number of channels remains the same the only thing which max pooling changes is the length and the width so in this case nl is equal to 3 right so in 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 the case which i showed here uh, i did not show the channel depth but basically it was 3 by 3 by ml minus 1 uh, sorry nl was equal to 9 because in the original image we had a 9 by 9 image so nl was equal to 9 and the input size was 9 by 9 by ml minus 1 right now uh, the stride is equal to 3 and nl is equal to 9 so nl by stride will be 3 by 9 a uh, 9 by 3 so it will be 3 by 3 by ml minus 1 and this is exactly what we see here this three rows and three columns so the output size will be 3 by 3 and the number of uh, channel dimensions will actually stay the same this is what max pooling does to an image it downscales the image which means that it reduces the size of the image and it just uh, the operation which max pooling operates on or the operation which max pooling applies on the input image is just that it takes the maximum value in every block which it sees that's it so for example if you have an image like this and uh, if you have a max pooling which has which is 2 by 2 in size and with a stride of 2 so typically it's assumed as i said that the stride is same as the uh, dimensions or the size so then the first max pooling will be over this block the second will be over this the third will be over this and the fourth will be over this and then we take the maximum in each block so in the first block the maximum value is 20 which is shown over here in the second block the maximum is 30 which is shown over here in the third block the maximum is 112 which is shown over here and in the fourth block the maximum is 37 which is shown over here so this is the output value which we have now let me show you an interactive animation of how max pooling actually works so i am going to go full screen in this animation and i'm going to hit play right now so what you should keep your uh, attention on this green box over here that is the max pooling block and it will slide across the image and wherever it it is at it will take the maximum so right now it's at these four pixels which are all zero right so the output will be zero which is shown on the screen right now when i when i click on step you will see that it moves to the right and then the output is again zero then i click on step then the max pooling takes the maximum of these four values so then i keep on clicking step here you see now let me uh, come to a place where the output will not be zero let me come over here here the four values are 0, 0 0.2 0 0.2 and 0 0.9 so the answer is 0 0.9 over here so if i continue clicking on step for this entire image you will see that the resulting image first of all is a much lower version because now we are dividing by four remember the output dimensions are the input dimensions divided by the max pooling size which is two so the output image here will be exactly half uh, of the input image yeah so here is the output image which has been shown uh, if i click on play here you will see that it happens in a much faster manner over here and if you calculate the length and the width of the output image you will see that it's half so the area of the output will be one fourth of the area of the input because the length of the output is half and the width of the output is equal this is how the max pooling layer actually operates now let us look at the advantages of max pooling why do people use the max pooling layer in the first place so the first advantage of max pooling is that it extracts the most important features so here you see we take the maximum uh, maximum pixel value right out of all the pixels 
what it means is that we are looking at the feature or the pixel which has the maximum value so we are extracting the most important features from the image that's number one number two is that when a max pooling layer is applied it typically reduces the size of the image and that's why it actually reduces the computational time now once we apply the max pooling layer the size of the image is reduced right then the next layer which comes after that might be a filtering layer but that layer has to operate on a much smaller image and uh, that is the reason why uh, max pooling layer saves the overall computational time in a convolutional neural network but there is one more advantage of max pooling which is typically not known to many students and uh, that advantage is that max pooling adds something called translational invariance which means that it helps the neural network be less sensitive to small translations in the image for example let's look at these two images of the triangle they are only slightly rotated right uh, for example this image is just slightly rotated to the right than this image in max pooling it will not matter since we are only taking the maximum value in a group of group of images even if the image is slightly translated or if the image is slightly rotated or even if the image is slightly enlarged it will not matter because we are only taking the maximum value in a group of neighboring pixels so that group will roughly stay the same and the output of the max pooling layer will remain the same whether the image is slightly uh, translated or slightly rotated etc as a result another advantage of max pooling is that it adds translational invariance these three are the major advantages of the max pooling layer and that's why it's one of the most commonly used layers along with the filtering layer in a convolutional neural network i hope you understood about the max pooling layer, the mathematics of the max pooling layer, the visual, the animation which we saw, and then finally the advantages of the max pooling layer. I'm trying to make these lectures as visual and as easy to understand as possible. In the next uh, set of lectures, we'll be looking at the entire convolutional neural network architecture after looking at the filtering layers, which you saw in the previous class and the max pooling layer in this class. In the next lecture, all of this will come together and we'll see exactly how the convolutional neural network architecture looks like. Thank you so much everyone and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.